tucked into East Austin, Rita and Keith Bird's diminutive house, built in 1925, hasn't changed its footprint, it just upped its romance. Over 10 years, Keith worked on both home and garden and built the cedar and metal post fence. He remodeled a trailer and shipping container in back for office and storage space. Then he and Rita decided to get married at home. To pull together his ideas, he called on longtime friend Billy Spencer of Spencer Landscape Company. Landscape architect Shani Clemens with Shademaker Studio brought her vision into the collaboration. The design is driven plant-wise by their love of birds and butterflies, so everything is primarily native, but meant to attract um, hummingbirds and bu butterflies and um, pollinators. And then uh, they have a dog, and so every um, component in the garden is is dog, uh, I guess dog proof is what I like to say. So we made sure that none of the plants are poisonous or toxic. And then also keeping the plant material away from the perimeter of the property so the dog can do her patrolling. One of the main things about the front is the American ash. They're not great for this climate. They, they kind of grow too quickly and shed a lot, but it, it's, it's a really important part of the front yard. So part of the process was pruning it correctly. And um, I think the, over the course of the last eight months where it's gotten a little more water, it looks as good as it ever has. So I think that helped set off the front of the garden. They have an old iron fence in the front with a really charming archway, and that was important to them to keep. When I came and saw the house for the first time, you couldn't really see it. It was overgrown, and it was rusted, and so they took it down, I think, and painted it, or it's been cleaned up and painted. There's like a little rambling rose that was in too much shade, and we transplanted it against the fence over on the north uh, west corner and now it, it looks great. The crinums were existing. Crinums are great when they're tucked in to a layered bed like that because then they just kind of bloom like a bulb coming out of a, a space that you don't expect. There are uh, some turks cap up there and I think the Berkeley sedge is, is really creating that mass and mm -hmm. some of that kind of calm feeling up there. The Berkeley sedge is the in that condition is is really thriving because it's the perfect amount of light i think yeah. it's dappled shade using it in a mass like that makes the space feel bigger and calming so if we have a lot of, of plant material going on underneath the ash that's you know i think that you need to balance that with something that's a little bit <laughs> more calming massing is something that i like to do for a couple reasons because i think it makes spaces that are small feel bigger but i also think that um, on a maintenance standpoint, it makes um, water consumption um, less and then also easier to maintain. I think the idea with the design for the front yard was just working with what they had, but also making the connection to like how, how they use the space daily in and out of the driveway and connecting to the front porch and then also having a, a pedestrian access and using that gate uh, from the street was important. They patterned Mexican adobe brick for a low glare, warm welcome. Probably the biggest change in the front is the porch. So the front porch was existing, but it just had this very narrow three foot wide um, stairway down to the path. And we extended the, the stairway, the whole width of the porch stoop. They sit on the, those, those steps and they talk to their neighbors and they, they've just said that it's made a transformation of how they've used the space because before they were always in the backyard. Now the house looks really charming from the street. The side path is repurposed brick that they had stockpiled. The existing locot tree showers the garden with fragrance in late fall, its flowers attracting bees and butterflies. When the fruits ripen in late spring, Reed and Keith gladly share the bounty with butterflies, birds, and squirrels. To make the most of this narrow, sun-dappled strip, they created an intimate hideaway framed with clusters of bamboo muley and inland sea oats. It's a little consistency too from like a maintenance standpoint that you have a group of plants that are going to behave in a really predictable way. You know, the presence of something that you can really kind of count on all the time is, is, is nice um, to help organize a space like that. In back, sunlight rules. 
The lawn was there, although it was mostly weeds mixed with some Bermuda, and then this zoysia was put in. We added planting beds on both sides of the house. To invite wildlife to share their lives, they ensure that a meal's always ready from perennials to trees. In late spring, Anacato Orchid Tree promotes the East Austin Habitat Highway. And then structurally connecting these elements together was important. In years past, Keith had installed and spruced up a 1952 Royal Spartan Ant and shipping container for office and storage space. He's meticulously remodeling the Airstream. Really intended to use this as a workspace uh, and, and as well as entertainment. Feels like a space you could putter and work in and or entertain in or barbecue or you know lots of different uses. To renovate this exterior room, Keith built low rock walls at its back. He left room behind for a grilling or gardening workspace out of sight behind the shipping container. Also, he wanted room along the cedar fence to deepen it with layers of flowering shrubs and perennials that attract wildlife throughout the year. For permeable patio flooring, Billy and Shaney chose pea gravel. One of the reasons why people don't like pea gravel is because it's installed incorrectly and so you sink in it, your chair will sink in it. So to do it correctly, it's over a compacted road base and that's, you know, three inches probably, or just enough to get it compacted and sloping so it drains. This gravel is, looks great, but it's not expensive. To provide a light-filled ceiling, Billy and Jenny anchored rolled netting to post of reclaimed oil pipe. Young evergreen star jasmine and clematis armandii will shade the patio in a few years, scenting late spring with white flowers. What I like about it is that I think we have this overhead connection, but then we have um, that wall just kind of really defines this seating area and defines the space and connects all of the structures together. It's also the focal point from the back porch, so you know, you're looking through these layers, but the terminus of that is the flowers and the trees behind it. They spend a lot of time out here. One of the nice things about working with Shaney and working with the client on this space is we had a really fixed budget um, that was um, at the forefront in the beginnings of the discussions about how much they wanted to spend on the space, what they wanted to accomplish. The reason for the homeowners wanting to do this project, they plan on staying here, but they plan on getting married too. So they were looking around um, at events and venues, I guess, um, and the price to rent a venue in Austin um, that money they felt like they could just spend on their garden and use every day, but also have the wedding here. So the, the focus, I think we wanted to create kind of a wedding event, you know, intimate space for that. But beyond that, just thinking that, it, you know, there's a space for a lot of color and texture and flowers day to day. Mm -hmm.